So um, we'll jump right into it. So guys, I'm super excited to get to come back to you all with um, with an interview. We haven't done an interview in forever. Um, you know, we've been we've been so focused on answering your questions that. Um, you know, we've, we've had a few folks that we've reached out to that we've wanted to get on to introduce, you know, introduce to you all, our listeners. Um, and I, I couldn't think of, of a, a better friend and a better coach to bring on than our guest that we have this week. Keegan and I have known each other for what, what do we figure last, last time we saw 10 yeah. years? Yeah. I'd say at least 10 years, 10 years. Yeah. So, um, one of my last years or my, my last year, uh, doing active UCA staff in the, the summer camp setting and Keegan and I met. Uh, we were both on Florida staff, and just a brief introduction by him. I'm going to let him tell you guys a little bit more in detail. But Keegan was a, a cheer athlete at the University of Central Florida, also a college coach, multiple colleges. Currently, head uh, currently one of the coaches over at, at uh, GCU in Phoenix, and is also the state director uh, for Arizona with varsity. So. We're going to talk today. We're going to catch up on some things and some some talk. Obviously, a lot about the history and kind of our friendship and throughout the years. But um, tell us, you know, that was a very brief introduction. But tell us about, you know, about yourself. Tell us about a little bit about more about who you are. And, you know, cheer wise and not. Tell us about what makes you awesome. Tell you know, brag on yourself a little bit and and let our guests know a little bit more about you um, that uh, you know they may not know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, first, thanks so much, man, for. Uh, for having me on. I know our conversations are so in depth and if, you know, more people recorded our type of conversations, I'm sure they'd, <laughs> they'd learn a whole lot about us and a lot with cheerleading, but yeah, you know, I, uh, I cheered with, uh, UCF, uh, under Linda Gooch out there for about four years, won a national championship in 2007, go Knights, uh, which was awesome. Uh, I actually learned to do cheer staff, uh, through Travis, you know, through the cheer docs. So, um, Great, great I'd, learning. I use, use that as a resume builder. Oh yeah, no, exactly. You know, that's, <laughs> that's actually one of the first things. It's national champion and learn from Travis. Oh, I'm talking for, about for my re- my resume. I got national oh. cha- collegiate national champion saying that I taught him how to staff. Man, <laughs> goodness. Hey, all about it, man. <laughs> but yeah, you know, you know, cheered there and and loved it. Uh, and through through actually doing staff and and cheering at UCF it really kind of found my passion for coaching. And then from there actually went over to uh, the rival school right down the, right down the street Mm -hmm. for South Florida coached there for about three years, uh, helped to reboot that co-ed program that had kind of, kind of just taken a back seat for a little bit. So Mm -hmm. they're doing great these days. Uh, Was Matt Schaefer Schaefer on staff with USF or was he just an athlete there? Um, Do you remember Matt? Yeah, I do remember Matt Schaefer. I think, I mean, he was always a great alumni, great supporter out there. Um, but no, I don't think he ever coached. If okay. anything, he might've come in a couple of times, but, okay, okay. um, not, not during the time that I was there. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, and then, yeah, just, uh, eventually made my way out here to beautiful sunny Phoenix. Uh, you know, I mean, right now it's about 55 degrees, but I'm mm-hmm. sure in a lot of other parts of the country, it's pretty dang cold. So, <laughs> uh, and, and loving it out here with Grand Canyon university, in Phoenix, it's a, uh, you know, on campus wise, it's, it's certainly growing just the amount of growth that it's had in just the past three years that I've been here have been amazing. And same thing with the cheer program. They went from, you know, around 30 kids last year to about 45 this year. Okay. So just the amount of growth there is just, is wild. So and what then, kind yeah, of, what also kind doing of, UCA and NCA. What kind of teams do y'all have as far as like your total program? Um, right now what we have is, um, a small co-ed division. So right now, I mean, we do like, that's where we compete, but we have about 11 to 12 couples, uh, co-ed couples, and mm-hmm. then the rest being all girl groups. Okay. Okay. And whenever I was visiting a couple weeks ago, I know you guys were gearing up for, um, for nationals y'all in the division y'all are doing is sideline, correct? Uh, well, so we're doing, we're doing two, we're doing, uh, the game day division game so we're day, game twice. Day. Yep. We're doing game day first, um, which really is, a huge thing that Grand Canyon is known for, which is game day and our basketball. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then on top of that, then we're also doing the traditional, you call it show type cheer, um, kind of the more, interestingly enough, the more traditional sense of, you know, two minutes, 30 seconds where it's, you know, music, a cheer, and then music after that. Uh, so we'll be in that small co-ed division as well there. Gotcha. And you know, it's funny, it's it's easy to, to hear about a college like, you know, like GCU and, and for those that aren't familiar with 
Phoenix, right? Or if you're not familiar with the program, um, you know, Phoenix is is huge. It was like the fourth la- or is it the the fifth largest city in the country, and 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 GCU is not. I mean, it's not a small school. I mean, you guys have a it's a big university. Oh yeah, real big university. I mean, just last year, I mean, building two new dorms and just getting a new uh, rec center in with twelve basketball courts is is wild. So and that's and again that tells you that I'm a cheer coach where I'm just thinking about you know the space that we can practice in. <laughs> right. And have more athletes. So always, you know, it's kind of that bottom line for me. For sure. Um, tell uh, tell us a little bit more about, like, the current situation for you in the Toronto. You kind of started into it with the with varsity and then obviously with your working with, with GCU. But tell us a little bit more in detail about kind of your current situation in the cheer world, what you're working towards, what's kind of on the horizon for GCU, for varsity in Arizona. Um, you know, obviously with this – Kind of, you and I spoke a bit about this merger of sorts. Not a merger necessarily, but you know, more collaboration between UCA and NCA. So, talk to us a little bit about kind of what's you're working on in your cheer world specifically, and and some of the things that you have uh, that you're looking to to achieve. Yeah, you know, uh, immediately, obviously, we had uh, nationals coming up, so had our first performance with Grand Canyon last night in front of our home crowd. Went great, great hit there. Um, and with UCA and NCA, it's it's always interesting because, you know, being a part of the, the cheer world for so long, you know, we've always had the, the two, you know, in our minds, it's always been the, the two separate houses. You know, if you're mm-hmm. uh, you know, Game of Thrones, Game of I Thrones. feel it's, it's <laughs> exactly it's kind of one of those things where it's like that UCA and NCA. And there's always been, you know, that difference between the two. But what's been so great lately is that with the, um, you know, the acquisition of uh, NCA into the varsity family and, the, you know, all those brands coming together, you know, with USA, uh, which is more out here on the West Coast, mm-hmm. NCA, and then UCA, obviously, you know, being the, uh, you know, one of the, the major brands as well. It's, it's such a cool time to be a part of such a big growing business is because they're all doing such different things, but all just thinking about the same thing, which in the end is just helping to improve athletes and helping to improve, you know, the overall experience that we have for our kids during the summer and all that, which I know it's even hard to think about the summer right now, but you know, I'm signing up teams right now for, for UCA camps here in Arizona. And we have, <laughs> we have, which is great, you know, in Florida, if you remember, mm-hmm. we all used to always do it at uh, UCF out there, you know, yep. college dorms yep. here. We have, all we have is just resort camps. As, I mean, we have some up, we have one university mm-hmm. uh, up in NAU up in the, in the mountains there, but you know, Except here we're spoiled where majority. Yep. In that Flagstaff yeah, area. Yeah. So majority here, we have all resort camps. So, uh, you know, I'd like to say that I wear multiple hats, you know, between coaching and then, uh, you know, education for coaches as well uh, out here in Arizona. But it's just kind of one of those things that it, instructing has always been a part of my life. Mm-hmm. And my mom had always said, you know, do what you love. And for me coming out of college, you know, I wasn't thinking the first thing in my mind was let's coach you know, that's a, that's a good way to, you know, make a living. Right. You know, I was thinking I wanted to go into sales or be a psychologist, but in the end, that was kind of always, always the thing that I came back to was mm-hmm. just education mm-hmm. of athletes. And so that was kind of my big deal. You know, I will say this one thing that I, you know, being going back to, you know, just friends and, and working together. And then now as the years have passed, you know, I, I, I find it, I find it really endearing, you know, when I came to visit, you know, and, and the coach, you know, there's a, there's a, you know, that old saying, those who can't do teach, right? And, you know, I talked with Pucci about this on his, you know, whenever we were doing his interview um, a couple of months ago. And I feel like, you know, to watch you when you're critiquing your athletes, like you're not just telling it. Like you, I mean, without a warm up, you grabbed one of the girls, you threw her up, you gave her cues when right in the middle, like that hands on approach with how you, you know, kind of take the reins. It's, it's, it's really, it meant, it meant a lot to me to see you 10 years later, you're still hands-on with your athletes. You're still doing the things that, you know, a lot of folks end up giving up and it, it truly does add a lot of value. In my opinion, it adds a lot of value to the athletes because it's not just like, Oh, you know, our coach used to do this stuff, but what does he know now? It's like, yeah, I still outstunt you. 
<laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tell I tell my kids that all the time. I say, you know what? I want you to. I absolutely want you to be better than me. I will help you be better than me, but I'm not going to make it easy. Oh yeah. You know, sure. and and especially with you know the type of people you know that you're around every day, and you know you get to see and the people that I learned under, you know, doing college staff on the the college circuit with. Mm-hmm you know, great Kentucky cheerleaders and, you know, amazing, you know, Alabama, all those guys, you know, Mm -hmm. learning from them. And it's just kind of the thing to me is there's nothing like being with your athletes and being in that type of setting. And, you know, for the, for the people where they say that they can't do, you know, they teach, I think there's always people to find their niche, Uh, you know, whether game day is your type of thing, you know, if it's, you know, great motions, which is just as important in those, those game day type settings. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the guys, you know, big boys like me that can still stunt, Mm -hmm. you know, I think, I think the kids really do respect, uh, they do respect being able to see it because, you know, if even before YouTube was really a thing for us back in the day, you know, we used to just cling on to videos that we could find of, of good stunners and, and all that. So, that's kind of, that's kind of my thought process with teaching my kids is, you know, sometimes I can't even explain it. It's better for me just to, to jump in there. And, and I think they enjoy that as well. Absolutely. Now knowing, you know, obviously with your stunting background, you know, I don't, I can't remember. I know I wasn't the strongest tumbler. I don't know if you were throwing, you know, crazies. I know stunt wise you were a beast, but, um, you know, looking at this stunt and being a college coach and now the growth of stunt, the sport, how do do you see a future with GCU and stunt the sport and trying to cross over uh, into some of the other avenues or is, is sticking with more game day type stuff? Y'all's y'all's MO. Well, you know, I think game day is is a great uh, is a great outlet for a lot of different schools, especially out here on the West Coast. It is just blowing up completely. You know, in California, mm-hmm. they consider it a sport out there. And, you know, it's it's certainly taken over there with USA Cheer. Um, or sorry, USA stunt out there. So for us here at GCU, I mean, our big main focus always, and I think a lot of coaches can agree with it is game day, you know, is supporting, you know, supporting our athletes, supporting our, you know, basketball teams. And for us, we don't have football, which to me is, you know, both a a curse and a blessing where Mm -hmm. blessing wise, I can watch all the football I want on a Saturday. (laughs) Um, but you know, at the same time, it it does give us more of a central focus on our men's basketball team, which just went, uh, you know, division one and, uh, you know, uh, tournament eligible just in the past year or two. So for us, I mean, our main focus is game day and that's why we're going to UCA, uh, game day and game day nationals as well, which we're bringing our mascot and our drum line. So that's where our main focus is not saying that stunt, couldn't be a thing, uh, but just our main focus right now is always game day. Sure, sure. I mean, you, you stick with what you work at, you know, and if, if you you start to see a point where you could transition, you know, you kind of jump on it then. But, I mean, you got your ducks in a row. And, yeah, I know. I mean, I'll tell you what, man. It's, I remember cheering football. And it's funny as you'd think, you know, at least for me, I know everybody has their different opinion, but you'd think going to UF and being on the sideline at a UF game, especially when, when I was cheering was when Florida was probably the best they've ever been. But surprisingly, man, I, I honestly enjoyed cheering basketball more than I did football. I mean, don't get me wrong. I loved football, but something about being right there on that court, right there in the middle of like, you feel like you're in the belly of a beast. And so for you guys to have a solid program like that, that's really cool. Oh, yeah. Well, and that's the same thing. Even those, you know, those fouls that come out, I mean, you really do just feel, I mean, you could, you could reach out and touch those guys. Mm-hmm. As it is legal, but, you know, it's kind of one of those <laughs> things of where it is. It's just that face-to-face interaction is just wild and I mean, if you ever get a chance or, you know, anybody else listening to get a chance to just YouTube uh, GCU Havocs or, you know, GCU basketball games and, and see the type of environment that we put out there. I mean, it's, you know, the, for the kids and the kids really do all of the, uh, you know, tell us what's cool or what's hip. Um, and it, I mean, it's like a, it's really like a party these days. For sure. So speaking of, you know, it's easy to tell, obviously, by just listening to you talk that, you're passionate about cheer, you're passionate about coaching, you're passionate about growing the sport. So tell us, where does this passion come from? Like what's, you know, tell us a story from your past that led you to, you know, the style of coaching that you do today, you know, the things that you're into, kind of what molded you into, you know, who you are as a person and also what helped to create this work work ethic that you have of coaching, state director, hands-on coaching, 
you know, all these, you kind of got your, you know, you got a lot of irons in your fire, so to say. So, you know, kind of tell us a little bit about from your past that kind of molded you into, into the coach and the, the director that you are today. You know, it's interesting, especially going that far back, uh, thinking about the, the first experience that I ever had with cheerleading. Uh, you know, I was going to a youth group. Uh, I was, you know, born and raised in uh, Annapolis, Maryland. Uh, there was a, a church out there and there was a youth group and one of the guys, I saw him toss up this girl or at the time I just said like, oh, you know, he just threw this girl up there and, uh, you know, she pulled her leg all the way up to her ear doing a stretch now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, and then, you know, and it, I think it, that's all it was. It was just maybe a toss stretch. And that's all this guy was doing. I come to find out he was a Kentucky cheerleader. And this was around eighth grade. Okay. Um, so I uh, saw him do a toss stretch, thought it was just the most amazing thing, you know, asked him about it. Turns out he was a Kentucky cheerleader. His name's Jeff Bannon, uh, still active in cheerleading out there. But um, yeah, and then he took me to an all-star gym and kind of kind of got my start into there with uh, my first early years, it had always been all-star for me personally. I had actually never done high school. I never cheered a high school football game or basketball or anything like that. My experience was just with the show part of cheer, mm -hmm. just, you know, eight counts, tumbling, all that type of stuff. Uh, in even, I'm you know, not proud to say it for myself. If, if you know me personally of the, <laughs> the dancing and the jumps, I was just not very good <laughs> at that part of it. Um, but then, you know, going into the years, you know, being able to, to move around, my dad was in the, the military. So really the constant thing that I could always find was an all-star gym to be around and, and whatnot. And then eventually, you know, just found my way into a scholarship opportunity at UCF and, and throughout the whole time, it was always kind of one of these things of like, all right, well, you know, I'm good at it. So I might as well stick with it. You know, I was always a pretty big kid could, throw girls around and, you know, kind of pick up on that. But for me, it was that same mentality that I'm, I'm sure a lot of, you know, athletes just in general have of where if you watch yourself, you can usually try to find it watching tape, whatever that is to mm -hmm. do that. So, I mean, for me, you know, social media was such a big part as that started to come out, you know, my space and Facebook and all those right. guys being able to watch those videos and thinking like, Oh, you know, I think I can do that. I'll just watch that failing a whole bunch. Sure. Uh, but, but then going through it and, and doing that. So, and then with instructing, I mean, I, you know, I never thought of myself as, you know, doing UCA staff when I was, you know, a freshman, sophomore. I mean, I really didn't even start until I was a junior uh, with UCA and varsity and, and kind of just once I caught that bug and just had the ability to start teaching young people, you know, about, you know, about cheerleading, about, what I figured that I was okay at enough mm -hmm. that people, somebody would pay me to do it. So, mm -hmm. you know, I just kind of figured at that time, just kind of stick with it. And for me, it was just a continuous, like, all right, well, what's the next step of this? You know, right. doing core staff where you, you know, you teach the UCA staff how to be UCA staff and then, you know, doing college staff and teaching other college kids, you know, your own age on how to do that. And then, at, you know, you put in your time, you put in the right work and, you know, UCA state director, Pretty or, cool, man. you know, yeah, for, you know, for one of the, the, the largest companies out there. So yeah, yeah I, um, I mean, it, in, sh in short, that's, it was from a Kentucky cheerleader. <laughs> I'm, I'm so, you know, be, I'm just, I'm so impressed by just the, the route that you took and, and the, the things that you've accomplished in this work is, yeah, I mean, I remember that first and we, we joked about this, you know, I thought you were pulling my leg the first couple camps we did. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, you're asking me questions. I'm like, this guy's cheering at UCF with the national, you know, these national champion guys. Like, what the heck does he want to learn from me? And just to, you know, as we got to know each other and, and you know, as we, as our friendship grew, I realized, you know, it's just, you're just a genuinely good person that just wants to be good and do good. And so it's really impressive to see, man, after a decade that you've, you know, you, you never plateaued. You just kept going and going and going. And I mean, for some, you'd say, you know, you, there's always that question of what's the highest level cheer, you know, cause you think about it, like, is it active in the sport? Like, you know, you're a, a team USA. Is that the highest? Is it owning a gym? Is that the highest? Is it running a program? Is that that, you know, state director for me? So there's all these like kind of upper echelon things. And for you, I mean, you've done the majority of them, right? I mean, you've run in a program now, you've ran a couple of college programs, you're a state director. I mean, I'm just so impressed with, with your work ethic and, and how far you've gone. I really am. Well, you know, man, and, and the thing to say for that, and, you know, I'm glad for me, it's always just been one of the things that you're always able to learn something. That's the, that's the coolest thing. Like I never think 
I, for me, I never think that, you know, I'm at that point and, you know, quote unquote at that point of like, okay, well, you know, then I'll just coast and do all those types of things. You know, it, it's, it's learning. You can learn something from everybody, even in stunting. Like, even though maybe I thought that I could do a full up or I could do something better than somebody else, I was never afraid to say, Hey man, like to a guy spotting, sometimes it's, you know, somebody who might not be as skilled or has a, have as much experience, but to me saying like, Hey, would you see? And they, I, all the time it happens to me, even my kids, I'll be stunning with somebody trying to teach a new skill. And I'll say to the you know guy who's never even seen this skill before, mm-hmm. Hey, would you see first thing that they say is I've never done this skill before. I mean, that's, that's the thing that is, it's just, what do you see? Like, do you see it a different line? Do you see my hands going weird? Do you see it going fast? And most of the time they're like, I'm just making sure she doesn't hit the floor. And <laughs> for me, I'm like, look, man, just, just tell me what you see. You see something go off. Let me know. And it's always just that learning from everybody. I mean, I've, I feel like I've surrounded myself, you know, throughout the years with, with great people and, uh, you know, great friends from college coaches who, you know, or, you know, being able to pick the brain of, you know, Jomo K. Thompson, you know, over at mm-hmm. Kentucky yeah. and, and learning from, you know, the, the decades of experience from Linda Gooch at UCF um, and, you know, just all those crazy great choreographers, just getting the chance to be around those people and pick their brains has always been a thing. And, you know, they got to the point that they were at, not by just kind of that status quo type deal. They just kept on pushing and said like, all right, well, what's the next step? And mm-hmm. so that's what I've always thought is just, you know, keep on pushing and, just make the difference in kids' lives. That's always kind of what I thought. And that's why to me, there's really no end point because for me, like people want to win national championships. Don't get me wrong. I certainly do. Um, but my main goal is to actually coach the kids of the kids that I've coached. Sure. Sure. So like a generational type thing, that's, that's like my big goal. And, you know, once I get there, you know, then we'll start talking about maybe a retirement, but you know, that's, that's super far up there. No, you know, and that's, that's an, honestly, it's a perfect segue into what I wanted to talk to you about next. And it's, you know, what daily habits, rituals, you know, do you have as a person, as a coach? Um, and, and as a, honestly, I mean, let's think about it. I mean, let's, let's be real. We're, you know, still an athlete. I mean, you may be on the other side of the of the ball, so to say, but you're still, you know, active with your, your kids. So what is like a, you know, some daily rituals or habits that you do to help continue to grow? What's your typical morning look like? Are you a morning person? Are you more like working at night on stuff? Kind of, you know, obviously with all the things that you're doing and all the hats that you're wearing, I'm sure time management is a very big thing. So kind of tell us a little bit about kind of like a day in your life and how you stay, uh, you know, on the front of, of your growth. You know, uh, for me, being just the kind of guy that I am a little, a little bit old fashioned. I'm a big breakfast guy. You know, I like to get my coffee, get my, uh, bacon and eggs down. Uh, but then for me, it's, you know, first it's that business portion. So much of what we do, uh, with varsity and UCA and NCA has to do with, um, you know, communicating with the office in Memphis. So I tend to get up a little bit early, check my emails, do all that type of stuff. And that's probably around up until maybe 10, 10, 10, 30, and then it's heading over to the university, which is about 15 minutes away. It's nothing too crazy. But uh, with Grand Canyon, we meet twice a week as a whole entire uh, cheer program. And I think it's I mean, to me, again, just learning from different people, the um, the the head coach out there uh, with Grand Canyon, her name is Emily Stevens, has has built kind of such a great culture of building the athlete as a whole, just not as, you know, skills. And this is what we need you to do. Mm -hmm. So for us meeting twice a week, you know, we go over one scheduling, all that type of stuff, but between devotionals, uh, you know, motivational, and that's all run by the kids. Uh, it's just kind of one of those things for me, it's one refreshing to see, but also to, to kind of gauge a temperature. I think so much of, of what we do, sometimes we get lost in just the skills or just the competitions. And if you're not taking the time with the athlete itself and trying to grow them as a person, you know, you're kind of missing the ball if you're not thinking about the athlete as a whole. Sure. Um, and so for us, so then we do that, you know, we get into practice, you know, they work out three times a week. And uh, for me, it's, it's kind of been back to the drawing board every single day that they, you know, do a skill or something. We, I take my uh, Excel spreadsheet, go out and, you know, say, okay, well, you know, we had, we got this done, this done, this done, you know, what can we improve upon? So, 
you know, whether that's, you know, a better game day presence, whether that's better stunts, you know, just kind of kind of getting the temperature every single day of what's going on and then moving from there. Getting goals is and getting skills is great, but kind of the process in doing that is, is always my goal for there. So um, me, a lot of it is just looking back on what I did that day. So a lot of the times, I mean, I, I usually st- I am kind of a night person as well. It's morning person and night person. Mm-hmm. Uh, I end up just kind of looking back on the day and, and seeing just where I could have improved upon, whether that was interacting with the kid, you know, a way that I could have put something differently. Um, even sometimes, you know, in, in calling that athlete, you know, with uh, just kind of notes on where I think we could have improved upon that day and then, you know, moving forward to that. So for me, it's, it's, it's a lot just of just going back and looking at what I did and what I did wrong and what I think I could improve upon. I like that. What, you know, in looking at your team and kind of the needs of your program, what are some things that are important to you either skill wise or mentality wise, you know, for some of our younger listeners that may be maybe in this region or considering GCU as a school, or maybe even after just listening to this interview are looking more into the program. What are some things that you kind of expect out of your athletes, either skill based personality based both you know what's something that stands out to you um as a as a good kind of piece to your program you know i and this is kind of the interesting part is i really like good communicators understandably coming right out of high school going into college there's always that you know that in between of just trying to figure out who you are as a person mm-hmm. you know i'm 31 years old and still trying to figure that out myself so when it's these college kids and you're just trying to do it, just the ability just to try and, and to try something different and, you know, having that idea of, OK, somebody, you know, if I'm an athlete, I, I would want them to kind of come to me. Look, I don't understand this. You know how you're explaining it really doesn't make sense. It's certainly not disrespectful. You know, I think to any coach, if they would love their athletes to come up and be like, hey, I don't think I understand this uh, rather than those blank stares you get. Mm-hmm. No, absolutely. Because when you get the, when you get those blank stares, I'd rather them say, "Nope, I don't understand." I say that all the time. Where I'm like, "You get it? No? Okay, that's fine." So then let's talk about it in a type of different way. It's, so it's, for it's, me, it's, it's it's like they think we can't tell that they <laughs> they have no idea. Right. <laughs> right? You're like, yeah, you feel like you're speaking a different language, and you're just like, it's cool. Just just tell me that you don't get it. I'd rather you ask me than do it, you know, wrong. And then you know, so for me, it's it's always just about you know, have that communication and that, and that relationship with the kids. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I'd like to say that, you know, certainly that skill is always an important thing. You know, I want to make sure that the skills that they do have, you know, either going from basic, you know, all the way up to advanced, that it's a skill that they know and they have confidence in, you know, I would, I would rather take somebody who has a super confident back tuck than somebody who isn't really sure if that full is good or, you know, whip through to full, you know, and it's really sloppy. Cleanliness really is a thing, especially if you're going to put it out, you know, on game day, Mm -hmm. you know, certainly not the full, but, uh, you know, doing those, you know, tucks and those basic type of skills for us, the basics If the basics look easy. Then we know that the the more advanced stuff will, will kind of come with time. So certainly with skill, you know, obviously we want, you know, those back tucks and, uh, and those basics of skills, but it's really just a willingness to learn for me, you know, and taking critiques because that's, that's, I mean, that's what we do as coaches. You know, we critique kids and and sometimes I think they get, you know, that word gets a bad rap because it's really not critiquing. It's just trying to help them. Mm -hmm. So uh, those kids being able to take that constructive criticism and being able to do that. And, um, and you know, do you know what a finsta is? A what? A finsta. Yeah, exactly. That's what I did too. So, um, we, we do look at our, uh, our athletes, uh, Instagram are their, uh, Oh, their the fences, the fake, and, the fake Instagrams yeah, where they, where they have their, the yeah. ones that they share with their people that they don't want to see all the other stuff. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. You know, I heard about those. It, oh yeah, it is. And you know, certainly some though that we never really did. We probably just made bad choices and, you know, never put it <laughs> you on. You don't have to worry about documenting media. it, right? Yeah. Gosh, man. <laughs> Yeah, but so with, I mean, we look at social media, you know, and for, you know, all the younger listeners, it really is important. And when people think, oh, well, you know, I have it under a different name or something like that, you know, all it takes is just one person just to have a bad day and screenshot something like that and, you know, send it. And, you know, as a coach, 
so much of what we do with our athletes is in a public setting, you know, whether that be, you know, for, you know, UF cheerleaders being at, you know, a, you know, a couple thousand people, you know, people game mm-hmm. to just a, just an appearance with, you know, your president of your university, those people know who you are and they will want to, you know, be a part of that social media experience and somehow, some way they'll find those things. So, I mean, we take into a lot of consideration people we do, you know, two rounds of interviews, you know, with alumni and, you know, just part of, you know, people from our program. And for us, it really is looking at the whole person, you know, are they good communicators? You know, what do they really want in their college experience? And, and to see if that, you know, flows with, with our mentality as well. Absolutely. And, you know, in talking about kind of looking layer by layer at the athletes and obviously not, you know, you want a good multidimensional kid that's well, you know, skilled and willing to learn. I mean, it's, there's a lot of pieces to, to a well-rounded athlete, but what do you feel outside of just cheer, you know, like, you know, in the gym or on the mat, what do you find is, um, you know, something that's really important for athletes to be doing uh, to create a more desirable athlete? You know, I, I think it really is just just talking to your, you know, talk to your coach. And it doesn't even have to be about cheerleading. You know, talk to them, you know, kind of get life advice, you know, whether that be in school or, you know, the type of university. I mean, for me, looking at these athletes and and what I wish they would have gotten in high school is just – you know, just a matter of life experiences. So, you know, whether that's doing a different type of club or, um, you know, you know, yearbook of just working with other people and, and getting that, that type of team mentality experience, even if it's, you know, getting another group project, you know, wanting, you know, you're in science class and you want to get another person there. It's kind of just working with people and, and realizing that no matter what you're going to do, and especially in cheerleading, you're going to have to work with people who have different views and opinions, but still making that work. So getting those life experiences, you know, of clubs, different people in your life, you know, dealing with people you don't like, mm-hmm. you know, still being able to, to have that professional type of uh, relationship with them is, you know, always a big important thing as they start getting into college. Sure. And, you know, I know you touched on it a little earlier about, you know, wanting to work with these kids through, you know, you're working with the kids, kids, and that being a big goal. But, you know, what is, you know, what's your, like, what's your North Star, your drive, you know, your guiding light? What do you want people to say about you like a hundred years from now? You know, if people look back and they're like, oh yeah, Keegan, what would you want? What would you want people to remember you for? Um, You know, for me, for me, it's always been a, a big goal of mine and kind of a saying that a big North Star, as you'd like to say, is people won't remember the type of things that you did. It's always going to be how you made them feel. Absolutely. And, and for me, that's always been a big goal of mine is just, you know, when somebody remembers me or, you know, thinks, thinks back on a time that, you know, they met me or they did that, you know, you know, he made me, he made me feel good. He made me feel, you know, the, the conversation was good. You know, he made me feel important. He made me feel wanted. Just kind of one of those things of I've always wanted to impart on somebody um, you know, that I hope they have a good day. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm a big believer in, and you know, if you've met me before, kind of one of my favorite sayings when people ask me on how I'm doing is just, you know, live in the dream, Mm -hmm. you know, whether you believe that every day or not. Um, for me, I just continually say, you know, some people have a mantra, you know, some people have, um, vision boards and whatnot. For me, it's just always been a thing of what, what you say you become, And if you are putting good thoughts out there, you putting, you know, good messages out there, having good interactions with people, you know, the same thing will, will come to you even when you have those bad days. And, and Lord knows that that happens, you know, for everybody during different times in their life. Um, for me, it's always just been making those positive experiences with anybody, any, any person that I meet, you know, kid, athlete, parent, whatever is having those good experiences. And, you know, just every day trying to, to make their lives better. So then, they can, t- so they will be nice to somebody else. Mm-hmm. I guess it's kind of always my thing. It's just that, that whole passing it down and, you know, passing the buck. I hear you, man. That's, that's awesome. And I, I love that, you know, I love that you're, you're looking at, you know, impacting people 
in a different way besides just being their coach, right? I mean, there's, there's a whole lot. I mean, the word coach, I feel, is it's a great umbrella term, but I feel like when you really break down, there really is, it's, it's almost like an infinite amount of responsibilities. Like there is no one, you know, there's no one coaching book. If there was, and we'd have one book, right? I feel like, you know, it's, <laughs> right. it's like, here's the coaching book. <laughs> cool, I studied it. Here I am, I'm a coach. But no, I think that, you know, you're, I think you're, you're, your personality and your, your level of knowledge. And then also like just the investment that you make into your, your program and also into the state of Arizona as the director for these large companies. I mean, I feel like there's, you know, they're all lucky to have you, man. They really are. Well, I appreciate it, man. You know, uh, to me, it's just uh, take the responsibility of being a mentor, you know, depending on what somebody's background is, you know, a, a kid or, uh, or whoever, you know, you don't know where they came from, but you can always help them get to where maybe they want to go. Even if that's just the next step, you know, you can help them in that process. And I think, you know, with coaches and coaches education, you know, kids during summer camps, you know, all that type of stuff. For me, it's it's just continually helping somebody get to wherever they're going. So I, I think, you know, if we were going to, you know, write a book, it would just be about how to help mentor kids, you know, mm -hmm. help help mentoring coaches. You know, that's not saying you're better or less than anybody else. To me, it's just always been about, you know, what I can learn and what they can possibly learn from me. And, I, you know, I always hope that in, in the, the type of job, I say job real lightly, but, you know, in the career that I've chosen for myself, it's, it's just always been about helping everybody else. And, you know, and I hope that comes out in, in certainly what I'm saying and, you know, what I'm doing in life. So. Yeah, man, it's, it's, it is, it really is just living, living the dream for me, you know, every day. And sometimes I have to, I can't take myself that seriously because I'm going to go to work and talk about libs and, you know, high V's when somebody, I would have paid somebody, yeah. you know, to do that job. The, yeah, well, basically, right? you know, in the very beginning, <laughs> we're basically paying people. Um, but yeah, man, it's, it's just a, it's just a dream to, you know, be able to help mentor kids and, and help coaches as well here out here in Arizona. Absolutely, man. Well, that is a perfect time for us. We're going to take a break for just a second so we can hear from our sponsor from this episode. We'll be right back with Coach Keegan Hubbard. Stay tuned. Give us just a sec. All right, and we're back. We're back with Keegan. So we've gone through, we've talked a lot, Keegan, about your history of the sport. We talked a lot about your program and kind of, you know, your motivating factors, what drives you and what you look for in your athletes. But if you've listened to some of our interviews, you know – that there's the lightning round, right? You can't get away without the lightning round. So we're going to hit you with some rapid-fire questions that we have not given you ahead of time <laughs> so we can get a real answer. Um, so here we go. We're going to dive right in. First lightning round question. What was the funniest animal you ever owned as a pet? Um, funniest animal. You know, I have owned a two-and-a-half-pound chihuahua. Um, her name is Tila. <laughs> for about uh, 11 years now and she is she is just a trip um she goes to all the nationals practices a couple months ago i had to take all of her teeth out just at the age that she is oh, and so her, her tongue hangs out um about <laughs> about two inches so i mean she she's the most ridiculous looking thing that you've ever seen but i mean two and a half pounds of just you know loving this so i'd say it's it's my two and a half pound chihuahua mind you you know i'm about 5 11 uh, five eleven and a half. Um, Not a small human. You know, yeah, two hundred twenty-five pounds, and then I have this two and a half pound Chihuahua. So love her to death, but she's goofy looking. That's hilarious. What totally rad expression did you overuse in high school? <sighs> Over rad. I know, man. man. That's, a, that's a hard one. I mean, between my Abercrombie and Fitch that I was wearing, and you know. <laughs> I don't even know, like old old spice cologne that I was using. Um, <laughs> I would probably say, um, I'd probably say dope. I used to use uh, dope a lot. Okay, oh, oh that's dope. <laughs> totally two thousand four right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. What celebrity do you shamelessly follow? Ooh, which one do I shamelessly follow? Um, you know, I mean, I would say Bradley Cooper. Yeah. Okay. Bradley I was, Cooper. I was going to say, if you share yours, I'll share mine. What's, why? What you got? Oh, mine's way worse. If yours is Bradley Cooper, I shouldn't even say anything. 
I love uh, James Charles. James the, Charles, the makeup, the 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 guy, who, the, the young man who was the first cover girl, but as a male. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. Okay. And you know what? What's crazy though is I've seen Instagram videos and YouTube videos, and you know you just find yourself enthralled. The vortex. You just, <laughs> yeah, you just are watching, and you're like, you know what? I mean, not nah, that look wouldn't look good on me, but that. He does a really good job. He knows what he's doing, that. right? I'm, he I'm knows saying. what he's doing. That's somebody again with their craft. You're like, yeah, all right. He's, Re- he's getting into it on if, that one. You know, real respect, real. You know, one of the things that I truly like about him, and and one of the reasons why, you know, I say embarrassingly because it at face value, but one thing I will say that that truly has meant a lot to me, and uh, you know, being in this role is, you know. You and I, you know, we we're, we're a little bit more old school. You know, back when being a male cheerleader wasn't really acceptable as much as it is, you know, as it's, as it's kind of morphed now. So to see, in my opinion, to see one of these guys, one of these role models for some of our younger male athletes that, um, that, you know, may have come out, may have not come out, but you know, just somebody that's, that's, that's that successful, not positive for them to look up to, to have somebody in the limelight like that. That just to me is a, as a coach and as, you know, a doc that works with some of these kids and to hear some of their stories, to have, a role model like that is so successful. I mean, honestly, that's truly why I feel so not embarrassingly, but you know, face value. Yeah. I like, I like to watch a a teenage kid. That's great at makeup because he's really good at what he does. And he's a role model for these kids. So right. And just owns up to who he is. That's it. It's just, it's awesome. That is absolutely right. If you were a vegetable, which vegetable would you be? Ooh, I would be, uh, what is that? Um, a, uh, a broccoli, broccoli. You know what I, and the, this is not anything of a personality or anything like that. But when I was a kid, the only way that my mom got me to eat broccoli was if she told me that it was a mini tree. Mm-hmm. And so being a kid that wanted to be bigger, I was always thinking like, Ooh, I'm a giant. All right. I'm gonna eat this little tree. <laughs> So I don't know, man. Even today, I just every time that I look at it, I'm like, you know what? It does. It looks like a little tree. I'm gonna eat this tree. So, <laughs> yeah, whatever, whatever I can do in my old age to to make sure that I'm still staying at least a little bit healthy. I hear you. Uh, last question: If you could create a holiday, what holiday would you create? Uh, Thanksgiving times two. You know, <laughs> comes back just, to being big, right? And eating. It trees. does, you know, man. Oh, man, everything. You know, between that. Uh, you know, those mashed potatoes and that turkey, oh, man. just just a holiday centered around, obviously, you know, giving thanks for, for what you got and, and everything that you have. Also giving thanks for that food, man. Just grinding on that stuff. Oh, it's so good. Uh, yeah, I'll dude. take I'll take Thanksgiving times, too. Love it. So I'm going to put it just I'm going to put some links in a, the, the show notes below for, you know, for our, those of our listeners that are interested in um, in and getting to know more about the program. And also, you know, possibly looking at, you know, be maybe becoming an athlete out of GCU or if we've got some collegiate athletes that are in the area that are looking at possibly doing varsity staff, making sure that they're able to get connected with you. But if you could give us one uh, one parting piece of advice, one one leave us with something that, you know, is that we can wrap this thing up uh, for our listeners. You know, I think if if the world itself was just a little bit nicer to people, you know, a little bit more polite, you're having a bad day, whatever, you don't know what somebody else is going through, put yourself in somebody else's shoes uh, and try and see it from their point of view. Because, you know, if, if we're all just thinking about ourselves, you know, we're going to be, we're going to be in a bad place real quick. So I think just, you know, reaching out, seeing how somebody's doing for that day. And, you know, even if it's, you know, the person at the grocery store being able to say like, Hey, how are you doing today? You know, Every single person can use just a little bit more happiness in their life. So be that person to reach out. I love it. Be the light. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks for joining us, man. I really appreciate it. It's great catching up with you guys. If you're if you're interested in GCU, we'll put some information in the in the in the show notes below so you can get connected with Coach Keegan Hubbard. Um, thanks so much for coming on with us, man. I really appreciate it. No, thanks so much for having me on, Travis. I appreciate it. All right, man. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. All right, bye bye.